For most of us, our worst fears live only in our imagination. But Denise Gullidge saw hers come true on the afternoon of June 21st, 1987, near her home in Lafayette, Louisiana. Seems like it was yesterday. My husband was working, the kids and I weren't going shopping, and on the way, we stopped at a local gas station. When I pulled up, I pulled up to a pump closest to the entrance. I got out alone at first and left the kids in the car. I went in and just handed the attendant my credit card, told him I was going to fill up. What you doing? Dustin got out of the back seat. And when I started pumping the gas, he went to the driver's window and was playing with Missy and talking to her through the window. It was a very hot day, and I intended on leaving her in the car long enough to go in and sign the ticket. So I decided I would go ahead and start the car and turn on the air conditioner so that she would be cool in the car. Hello, did you pardon me? Sign the X, please, ma'am. I signed my name and turned around and my car was gone. It was gone. I felt like I'd just been hit by a truck. And it wasn't the car. It was the fact that my baby was in it. Gas station attendant Don Stansfield immediately ran outside to see which way the stolen car was going. We were less than a quarter of a mile south of uh, an east-west uh, interstate highway. Uh, which, once on there, he could have gone just about any place. 911, what is your emergency? At 4.16 p.m., a call came in reporting that Denise's six-month-old baby, Missy, had been kidnapped. The information was immediately relayed to the Lafayette Police Department. 705 Northwest Frontage Road. Stolen vehicle is a 1987 Chevrolet Celebrity, four-door maroon in color. Bearing Louisiana license 199 direct in route. While waiting for the police to arrive, Denise called her husband Austin. The phone rang, I answered it, and it was Denise just screaming at the top of her lungs. And uh, she told me that somebody had stolen her car and Missy was still in it. And I raced across town and the whole time I'm driving, just what in the world is going on? It was about a 20-minute drive. I made it in about eight minutes. The police had arrived even before Austin, but the stolen car was long gone, leaving no clues as to who the kidnapper was or where he was headed. We stayed there just a few minutes. I don't really recall exactly what took place, but I remember one of the officers telling me to come follow him to the police station. We'll go down there, and y'all can wait down there. At the police station, they were interviewed by Detective Robert Hemsell. Well, I was talking to the parents. I was trying to more or less calm them down. What's being done? And all the time, you just, I'm thinking, okay, 20 minutes have passed. This man could be 20 miles away. At that particular time, it was really growing slim. Uh, from 30 minutes to an hour, if you don't find the child, your odds are very slim. I felt like he was getting away, and they weren't going to find him in time. And I paced the floor in that little room, waiting and praying. Detective Hemsell put out an all-points bulletin, complete with a description of Baby Missy and the car, to every police department within a hundred miles of the city. At that particular time, that's all we could do. It's just a waiting game from that point, because we had done really and truly everything we could do in searching the area. Less than a half hour later, Thelma and Sanders Wyatt were 15 miles outside Lafayette on their way to visit family. We noticed a car had stopped on the side of the road. Now, what is that man doing there? So I told my husband, I said, it's a funny place to stop there for if he has trouble. So as we were getting closer, he went around and he got in the car and just rushed off.
So when we passed where he had stopped, uh, I saw some things scattered in the ditch. I think I saw something. Santa, stop! I said stop and back up. I want to see. He didn't say anything, but it's like God wanted us to stop. Okay, stop. There is something. And I jumped out of the car and picked up the little baby. And then uh, I said, I can't hold her anymore. I was so nervous, and the baby was screaming. So there was a truck coming down the road. I said, flag them down, and uh, they're going to help us. Because I was afraid to stay there with the baby by myself. I was afraid that man would come back. Local police and paramedics from St. Martin were sent to the scene. The baby girl was not injured. There was no way of knowing who she was, but they did notice she was wearing one corrective shoe. <coughs> Aware of the All Points Bulletin about a missing baby in Lafayette, rescue workers contacted the police there. And while I was talking to the parents, I got a call uh, to go to the communications room. Hey, Brenda, what do you got on the phone? St. Martin Parish Sheriff's Office. They and they described the exact clothing that the mother had given me. And when I went in and told the mother, uh, the descriptions matched. It was just like, she was hysterical again, but it was different. Uh, she was crying, but to me, she had like maybe tears of joy. It was happiness. When before, it was just pure fright. One of the sheriff's deputies showed me a picture and asked me if that was her. And it was. As soon as I walked through the front door, I heard her crying. And there was a nurse, and I immediately ran up to the nurse and just took her from her. And I remember hearing somebody behind me saying, it's okay, she's the mama. I feel like I was never going to put her down. I just wanted to hold her. It was just a total feeling of it's over. and. There's no more pain, no, nothing to worry about. She's okay, she's fine. I can't describe how it, it's almost as bad as the hopeless feeling to start with. Just a feeling of joy, I guess, that she's, she's all right. Everything's gonna be all right. No one was ever convicted of the kidnapping of baby Missy. Three years have passed, but for the Gulledge family, the memories are still vivid. I don't want anybody to feel what I felt that day. And it's not something that I've forgotten. I think about it every day. You never leave a child alone in a car. And it's going to haunt me for the rest of my life. And I want to scare somebody so that it doesn't happen to them. Missy and her family have grown close to Thelma and Sanders Wyatt. I realized that if it weren't for the Wyatts, it would have been days, if not weeks, before she was found. And she would not have survived in that ditch. I love her just like my grandchild. I feel just like, you know, she was like mine. Like she was my grandchild or even more because I saved her life. My mom, she said that every day she thanked God for nosy people. Because if she wouldn't have been nosy, we probably wouldn't have Missy here today. Next. Uh, does, uh, my dad's on here, my mom. Does he have any weapons? Uh, there's knives in the kitchen. Does he have it in his hand?